Welcome back everyone. I'm Eric from Rare Candy and here today we are back continuing our look into the past of the Pokemon trading card game and going over different cards and mechanics that I personally really want to see make a return at some point. Now I have been uploading other videos in this series already so if you do need to get caught up on some of the other ones I've posted I will have links down below in the description so you can get caught up on those as well. But for better or for worse, the Pokemon TCG is a game that does tend to recycle mechanics over the years. So very frequently, the best indicator of new cards and future cards we're going to get is actually looking at past cards that we've already had. So for today, we're going to be taking a look at 10 Pokemon tool cards, largely in no particular order that I want to see make a return, plus a couple of honorable mentions as well. By and large though, the Pokemon tool card mechanic is actually one of the few that's changed very little over the years. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of restrictions in terms of what I'm going to allow to appear on this countdown. However, I am going to do my best to exclude cards that do fill the same role as cards that are either in the current format or even older Pokemon tool cards that otherwise would be eligible to appear on this list as well. So one example of this would be a card like Bent Spoon. Despite it being slightly different than a card like Big Parasol that we currently have, the core of both cards is that they prevent effects of attacks done to your Pokemon. And as a result, cards like this won't be eligible to appear on this list. But if you are enjoying this series, be sure to smack that like button as it genuinely really does help get this video seen by more Pokemon TCG fans on YouTube. And the Pokemon tool card mechanic is a pretty old one in the game, so no doubt my 10 picks are gonna wind up looking a little bit different from yours. So at the end of this video, comment down below in the comment section, let me know what your 10 picks are and how they differ from mine. But with all that out the way, let's hop into the actual countdown. So before we get into my personal 10 picks, we do have two honorable mentions that were selected by our patrons over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. And our first one here was selected by Vince Mallow and that is going to be Choice Band. Choice Band, of course, was a very dominant Pokemon tool card from Guardians Rising, and it said the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon GX or active Pokemon EX before applying weakness and resistance. So this is totally an easy card that we could update for the new format. Just change the text to apply to Pokemon V or V Max. 30 damage is just such a meaningful amount of damage. As we've seen, even in the current format, if we look at things like ADP, I mean, you're including a tag team and these weird energies just for a 30 damage buff. I mean, granted, you also get extra prizes, but the 30 damage is very relevant a lot of the time. Or for the inverse, we can look at Lucario and Melmetal GX has seen play in Zacian variants as well, because again, that 30 reduction matters a lot. And because specifically a card like this would affect multi-prize Pokemon more so than single prize Pokemon, I think that actually gives single prize decks and evolution decks a better shot at maybe sneaking back into the game. So for Choice Band, I'm definitely in agreement with Vince here. I would be happy to see this one come back into the game as well. And for our other honorable mention, this one was selected by Adam Owen, and he wanted to see a skateboard come back into the game. It says the retreat cost of the Pokemon this card is attached to is one colorless less, and it can retreat even if it's asleep or paralyzed. And that last part in particular was really the main reason that people played a skateboard. Just because every time you use Jirachi's Stellar Wish ability, it put itself to sleep, and a card like U-Turn Board, or now Air Balloon, would not be able to actually work with it. And ever since the rotation of this card, a lot of Jirachi engines have really fallen out of favor just because now if you want to play an engine like that, you need some combination of switch and scoop up net in your deck. And if we look at the amount of deck spots that were taken up by this sort of engine, you know, typically decks played four switch and two escape board. But now if you want to play this engine, the common counts are like three to four switch and three to four scoop up net just because every time you want to use this effect, it is going to require another card from your hand, whereas a skateboard, once you get it down, it's there. It's not going anywhere. You don't need any other existing cards to make sure it works. So a lot of decks are now, I think, having trouble finding the space for these Jirachi engines. And if a skateboard came back, that would definitely be a big boost to Jirachi, even though it is probably going to leave us this coming summer when the next rotation does happen. But in the meantime, this would definitely be a fantastic card to see make a return for those remaining months, as long as we have the Stellar Wish Jirachi. But that's going to wrap up our two honorable mentions. Like I already mentioned, both of these were selected by our patrons at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. So if you guys want to have your voice heard and have your picks make it into future videos in this series, be sure to check us out on Patreon. Not only can you be featured in our videos, but also the support genuinely really does go a long way at helping support the channel. But getting into my personal 10 picks, up first we're going to have Weakness Policy. Weakness Policy is a Pokemon tool that says the Pokemon this card is attached to 
has no weakness. Very straightforward card and actually one that really didn't see a whole lot of play up until towards the end of its lifespan. But this is a card I feel like I found myself wanting when deck building in you know, recent formats over the past year. You know, it's had several printings already. So there's definitely precedent for this one to, to make an appearance again, especially with us losing weakness card energy during the summer of this coming year. It seems like it could mark a good time for a card like this to come back, just because not every deck can't afford to play colorless energy. And so I think a really good example of this is a card like Dragapult VMAX, just as a very easy example, because both of its energy and its attack costs are psychic. It's already slightly annoying that you need two manual attachments just to get your main attack up and running and needing a third one just to eliminate your weakness is just a little too much to ask for. So a card like Weakness Policy would definitely greatly advantage a deck like that and give it a shot to actually come back into the game a little bit more. Now, Grand, I'm not a big Dragapult VMAX fan, so I'm actually not rooting for that personally to happen, but I think it'd be a totally fair and bounced thing to see come back into the game, especially since we do still have things like Tool Scrapper in the format to keep this card in check. Coming in at number nine, we have a card that I am actually a huge fan of, and that is going to be Counter Gain. Counter Gain was a card that came out back in Lost Thunder, and it said, if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to is one colorless energy less. So you guys know me, I'm a big fan of setup decks, evolution decks, etc. And those are usually going to be the ones that benefit most from a card like Counter Game. A card like the Sidewai would now only need a single attachment to get up and running. Same thing for a card like Galarian Obstagoon. And especially with us losing Tapu Koko Prism Star and Triple Acceleration Energy this coming summer, a deck like Mad Party really doesn't have a great way at scraping together an attack once they've used all their twin energies or can't find their twin energies. Lost Thunder is actually one of my favorite sets of the Sun Moon Era, and Counter Gain is one of the reasons for that. So Counter Gain, fingers crossed, I'd love to have this back into the game. Coming in next at number eight is Mysterious Shard. And this is a card I actually totally forgot about until I was looking back through the card pool to make this video. But it's a tool that says attach Mysterious Shard to one of your Pokemon, excluding Pokemon EX, that doesn't already have a Pokemon tool attached to it. If the Pokemon Mysterious Shard is attached to is a Pokemon EX, discard this card. Then it says, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to the Pokemon that Mysterious Shard is attached to by your opponent's Pokemon EX, then discard this card at the end of your opponent's next turn. Much like with Choice Band that we looked at during our honorable mentions, this is a card that is so easy to update for the more modern state of the game. Just replace Pokemon EX with Pokemon GX, V, VMAX, etc., and the card will function just fine. Being able to turn your Pokemon into a Decidueye or Altaria per turn is a very strong effect. And I think it is balanced out pretty nicely by the fact that it does get discarded after its use. Now, your opponent can play things like Boss's Orders to get around a card like this, but nevertheless, I think this is a really cool effect. And with this card helping single prize and evolution decks the most, I think this card would be a great thing to have come back into the game. So big thumbs up for me for Mysterious Shard. Definitely one of the cards on this list I am rooting for the most. So next up coming in at number seven, we have Floatstone and Fluffy Berry. Either one would totally be fine in my book to come back, though I'm probably slightly more biased to, to Fluffy Berry if I had the pick. Floatstone says the Pokemon this card is attached to has no retreat cost. And then on the other hand, with Fluffy Berry, you attach it to one of your Pokemon, excluding Pokemon EX and Pokemon that has Dark or an owner in its name that doesn't already have a Pokemon tool card attached to it. If the Pokemon Fluffy Berry is attached to is a Pokemon EX or has Dark or an owner in its name, discard Fluffy Berry. But then as long as it's attached to a Pokemon, that Pokemon's retreat cost is zero. So both these cards, very, very similar in their effect. And while both of these are very similar to Air Balloon, which we have in the current format, I think they're different enough to warrant their inclusion. And hear me out, because I know like the, the difference in retreat cost between Air Balloon and this is very frequently just going to be one. If we look at a card like Galarian Weezing or the new Shiftry we just had back in Vivid Voltage, these are cards that have these very strong locking abilities and disruptive abilities. And they're bad attackers. Like you don't really want to attack with them. You want to be able to use a hit and run style card like Greedent or Behem, just as an example, and then promote them in between your attacks and then retreat them for free whenever you're ready to attack on your next turn. But a card like Air Balloon really doesn't enable those sort of plays. Floatstone was a card that we had in the format for a while. And, you know, after it rotated, it definitely left a big void. Things didn't feel quite the same. And I've been missing it ever since. And Fluffy Berry, you can tell by the text on this, this is a card I think I'd maybe prefer if we have the choice between Floatstone or Fluffy Berry, just because if we could print this for just one prize Pokemon, that'd be amazing. Because we can easily update the text on Fluffy Berry for today's stay of the game. 
just replace Pokemon EX with Pokemon V and GX. And we can maybe even update the dark or owner clause of the card as well. We have the new battle style cards coming out, which effectively work the same way as the owner cards did of the past. So maybe you can even update this to exclude rapid strike and single strike Pokemon. But hey, I'm not too picky with this one, guys. I would be ecstatic for either of these to come back. I'm a big fan of the hit and run styles of decks as well. And I think Shiftry and Galarian Weezing both have pretty good potential in that regard. So I would definitely be excited for those Pokemon and any future ones kind of in the same vein to have a shot in the game. Coming in at number six, we have another card that we haven't lost but too long ago. But it's Spell Tag. It says, when the Psychic Pokemon on this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way that you like. For some reason, I don't know what it is, I've always gravitated towards cards that allow you to spread damage or have at least a bigger say in some way of where your damage counters are going to go. And Spell Tag is definitely a great example of a card like this. Saw a ton of play during its lifespan, most notably in Malamar decks. And one reason I really do like Spell Tag is because it is a card that disproportionately benefits single prize and traditional evolution decks. Because while we do have things like Dragapult VMAX that do benefit from Spell Tag, it doesn't really help them that much because if your opponent only has to take two knockouts to win, then really you only have one shot to get any sort of benefit out of Spell Tag when they knock out your first Dragapult V Max. Meaning that Spell Tag is a much less oppressive card in these multi prize decks. This can help spread strategies like the Unbroken Bonds Weezing that we still do have in the current format, as well as a couple of random stage twos that we have in the format like Dusk Noir from Cosmic Eclipse or the Dragapult that we got back in Rebel Clash. So Spell Tag, big thumbs up for me. Definitely one that I would be happy to see make a return. Coming in at number five, this is a card that's a pretty risky inclusion, I think, because I could definitely see this coming back to bite me, and that's going to be Life Dew. It says, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out, your opponent takes one fewer prize card. So a very cool card, but the reason I say this might be a risky one is because while this effect is good, this could definitely be an issue if any successful control archetype does manage to make a comeback. You know, at the time of recording, we do have Excadrill still in the format that can get cards back from discard. So being able to keep reusing Life Dew is something I really would not be looking forward to. But at the time of recording, control decks haven't been too good. So that's why I am cautiously optimistic about including it. I definitely don't want to help out control decks. But at the same time, I really do like Life Dew. I think it's a really cool card at forcing your opponent into maybe being trapped into a seven prize game or like an eight prize game or something like that. So this is definitely a card on this list that I could see myself replacing with something else, but I still like it enough to give it a shout out on this list. I think it's definitely one of the more interesting cards that we're featuring here. So definitely feel free to let me know what you guys think down in the comments on this one if you think this would be a little bit too risky to make a return, but I still like it. I think it's a cool card. Coming in at number four, we have two different cards. We have Focus Band or Focus Sash. Focus Band is definitely the older of the two going back from Neo Genesis, but it says if the Pokemon Focus Band is attached to would be knocked out by your opponent's attack, flip a coin, if heads, that Pokemon is not knocked out and its remaining HP becomes 10 instead, then discard Focus Band. But then Focus Sash on the other hand says if the fighting Pokemon this card is attached to has full HP and is knocked out, that Pokemon is not knocked out and its remaining HP becomes 10 instead, then discard this card. So effectively the same card here, just Focus Sash of course only applies to fighting Pokemon, Focus Band applies to any Pokemon, but it does have a coin flip as a drawback. So while I'm fine with some incarnation of either card, I think ideally we would just have Focus Hash come back, but without the limitation to just fighting Pokemon. Just because I don't think coin flips are particularly good for the game. As long as Tool Scrapper exists in the format, I really don't mind this card not being a coin flip. Like Focus Hash in particular, if that one came back, I could definitely see that being good with a deck like Phalanx, just as an example, because they're already very difficult Pokemon to knock out with all the damage reduction modifiers that they have. And then with Focus Sash just on top of that as well, those Phalanx cards are not getting one-shotted anytime soon, which seems like that could be really interesting. I started to take my first highest from the game around the time Focus Band came out. I think I quit like a set later. So my memories of Focus Band in a competitive sense are a little bit hazier, but Focus Sash is a card I vividly remember playing during. But I think it is pretty balanced because your opponent can play things like Galarian Zigzagoon to break your Focus Band or Focus Sash. And we also have cards like Tool Scrapper to get rid of them as well. So definitely a very unique effect with both these. And if either one were to make our turn, I would definitely be on board with that. Coming in at number three, we have Headringer, which I think is one of the most interesting Pokemon tools we've ever seen. But it's a Pokemon tool and it says, attach this Pokemon tool to one of your opponents, Pokemon EX that doesn't already have a tool attached to it. The attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to cost one colorless more. And then whenever this card is removed from a Pokemon for any reason, 
put this card in its owner's discard pile. This is always just super interesting because this is a tool that affects your opponent, which is something that normally isn't allowed to happen with traditional tool cards. And again, this is another one that we can easily update for the modern era of the game. Just replace Pokemon EX with Pokemon GX, V, etc. This seems just so annoying and oppressive, being able to like maybe throw this down on your opponent's Zacian V, make their Brave Blade attacks need one more energy to attack. That would be absolutely annoying. Or even more oppressive against multi-attachment decks like Dragapult or Eternatus that need just manual attachments to get up and running. Now, again, we do have Tool Scrapper in the format, which I have been reiterating a lot throughout this countdown. So I think that would actually keep this card pretty balanced but I think this would actually be a sick card to have come back into the game today. And I'd even be down for other cards like this to make a return. Just for whatever reason, I'm really just drawn to this interaction in terms of how you can attach it to your opponent's Pokemon for them. I just think that's really, really cool. It makes Headringer a really fun card in addition to it being a very competitive one that saw a good bit of play whenever it came out as well. So Headringer, definitely rooting for you, buddy. Would like to see you come back into the game. Coming in at the number two spot, we have Silver Bangle. The attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to, excluding Pokemon EX, do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon EX before applying weakness and resistance. Now, this is very similar to Choice Band, which already technically did appear on this as an honorable mention, but even though these cards do very similar things, Silver Bangle being limited to only single prize decks is a huge thing, as currently all of the most dominant decks are multi prize decks. And Silver Bangle was a card that did see a good bit of play when it came out back in Plasma Blast, and I think was a really balanced card because not too long after this, we saw Muscle Band, which was very similar, but had a slightly lower damage buff. And I think that same dynamic exists right now because we have Vitality Band, which increases damage by 10. And then Silver Bangle, if this existed on top of that, that would be great to say, hey, if you're going to be a big, basic, aggressive multi-prize deck, we're still going to give you damage buffing options with things like Vitality Band or even other things like Zigzagoon, Leon, etc. But the single prize evolution decks, those are going to be the decks that are a little less consistent. They don't hit quite as hard or as fast as some of these other decks. They need the bigger boost. And I think that dynamic is really an appropriate one to have in the game instead of just having a card like Choice Band that any different deck can abuse. And coming in at the number one spot, we have Cessation Crystal. It says, attach Cessation Crystal to one of your Pokemon, excluding Pokemon EX, that doesn't already have a Pokemon tool attached to it. If the Pokemon Cessation Crystal is attached to is a Pokemon EX, discard this card. But then as long as it's attached to an active Pokemon, each player's Pokemon, yours and your opponent's, can't use any Poke Powers or Poke Bodies. So of course, if we just quickly update this card, just make this apply to Pokemon GX and V, change Poke Powers and Bodies to Abilities, and now you have yourself a modern, updated version of this card that works great in the current format. And again, this is another one of those cards that is a really good inclusion because it doesn't positively affect the big, aggressive Pokemon V, Pokemon V Max decks that are out there. And Ability Lock is something we really just don't have many great options for right now. I mean, we have things like Galarian Weezing, which doesn't really see any play. We have the Mimikyu, which is good against basically only Mewtwo and Mew GX. So being able to have a more general form of Ability Lock here would definitely, I think, be a cool thing to see make a return to the game, especially since this is a card that is pretty balanced right now since we do have Tool Scrapper in the format. So if you are a deck like Eternus and you are reliant on things like Crobat V every turn or your Galarian Slowbros or Zigzagoons, yeah, Cessation Crystal is going to be very oppressive against you, but also at the same time, you can play things like Dangerous Drill or Tool Scrapper, like I already mentioned. And with it being a card that's required to be on your active, I think that does keep this card in check a little bit more than a card like Garboder of the past, because that always has to be on one of your Pokemon that is in danger of being knocked out, compared to something like the Garbotox and Garboder, which could previously just sit on your bench with a tool card attached to it to turn off abilities. Now, the only thing that I could see being annoying about Cessation Crystal is the fact that you can play this even as soon as turn one. So maybe that's something I wouldn't mind seeing a change to. So maybe if you're the player going first in the game, you can't play this on your first turn, maybe something like that. But either way, I'd still be excited to see Cessation Crystal make a comeback. This is a card that saw a ton of play during its lifespan. So I think the precedent is set for this card to be very good if it did decide to make a comeback. I think this card is very, very strong and also very, very balanced and would be a great asset to the game right now. And with that, we are at the end of this countdown, guys. That is going to be my picks for 10 Pokemon tool cards that I want to see make a return to the game. But as I already mentioned, guys, there's a ton of Pokemon tool cards that have existed throughout the course of the Pokemon TCG. So sound off down below in the comment section. Let me know what cards you want to make a return and what you think about my picks that I had here as well. 
And if you want to have your voice heard and get your picks featured in the next videos in this series, be sure to check us out at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. But that's going to be it for this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you can, consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron like I already mentioned or by picking up some merch from our online store at rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.